I was cleaning out uh, a metal storage building I've got. Found a lot of old VHS videotapes that date way back, back 40, 50 years. And uh, turns out one of them was a uh, video that I'd made of a, I called it a robotic fluid actuated muscle analog. It's kind of a contractile device to operate either a prosthesis or a humanoid robot. And uh, this was a long time ago. It was a lot of fun at the time. It was just a personal project I worked on for a few years. And I thought, well, gosh, I need to update all these VHS tapes I got and convert them into a digital format. And to do that, I found a device on Amazon that looked like it would do it. I converted this, this, this robotic fluid actuated muscle analog tape. I just thought I would share that in this video. I thought it was kind of interesting, may interest some of you watching this uh, video. But, uh, and if you watch my next video, I'm gonna focus on exactly how to use the uh, converter, which is this right here, it's an Elgato video capture device. Um, and we'll, uh, you know, if you wanna use it to, to convert your tapes, you can. There's other brands of video capture devices out there, just one I just arbitrarily picked. So, hope you enjoy this video, and please check out the next video. This is a video clip uh, showing my original contractile device that I made back in the 1970s sometime or another. I worked on these, these kinds of things from the mid-70s to the early 1980s. This, this videotape, this old VHS tape, was dated 1983. But anyway, this is the original contractual device. just shows how this rubber tubing with longitudinal fibers attached to eye bolts and ends, a way to get fluid in it. And uh, that's what this is showing right here. Show you this prototype uh, mechanical arm that I made incorporating these muscle uh, contractile devices in it. What I've got is a hand that functions very similarly to a human hand connected to a mechanical arm It's just uh, attached to a stand here just for demonstration purposes. I've got a source of compressed air coming in through a pressure regulator which for this is me demonstrating uh, one of the prototypes that I've made. This is just showing uh, how the hand could operate. Control position of these devices is much better than with an air cylinder. You just stop introducing fluid, air, water, and they just stop immediately. Here I'm demonstrating what the hand looked like without the glove on it. So you can see a little bit better about how it was made. Um, so, simple way to make these things. Anybody could do it. It's like making a puppet hand, basically. And uh, if you puppet hand, you pull the strings, it's a puppet. If you attach an actuator to it, then it becomes, it can become a robot or a prosthetic hand. That was my main interest at the time, was making a prosthetic hand. But that's what this is, just showing this without the glove on it. Now this is showing more of the total arm. The deltoid movement moves the whole arm up, and then the biceps movement, and then the individual finger movements. Um, I had three actuators on the hand, one on the thumb, one on the index finger, and the other three fingers were combined. So that's why this looked like it did. But anyway, this is how it worked. Now here I was showing how you could use a multi-segmented uh, contractile device to uh, get a long distance of contraction but, um, and use it in something like a tree pruning uh, uh, apparatus. And that's what this is, running off the garden hose. Put water in it, it closed, and just open the valve and the water come out and, and it would work. This is just showing how when you put water on it, how it could uh, uh, cut a limb or a branch or something. 
So it did work. I've hung on to these robotic uh, hands 30 to 40 years. One of the problems you have when you use natural rubber is it deteriorates over time, especially if left out under ultraviolet lights or under fluorescent lights will do the same thing. This is what's left of the actuator that was in that uh, tree pruning uh, device I made in that old video that you saw. This is that one large hand. I had uh, three different types of movement. These fingers were connected together, that independently and thumb separately. And uh, these are all deteriorated. They all just leak now. Um, this was one that I actually had hooked up to a double E prompt programmable controller with a speech synthesizer. And I could put a cosmetic glove on it. I called it uh, Lefty Hand because it was based on my left hand. These are cosmetic gloves, a local uh, cosmetic glove company for prostheses. Uh, gave to me. They were just in a big pile they had. They were defective for various reasons. I'd put them over this device when it was working, and they're all left hands. And this is a left-handed device based on my own left hand. I asked them why they're all left hand, and they said because most people are right-handed. I mean, they hold the power tool in their right hand. They hold the board in their left hand and saw their left hand off. So this should be a good lesson. Don't ever do that. If you got both hands on the saw, you can't saw off one hand. So uh, just remember that. you got to secure your board some other way than holding on to it with your hand. Just don't do it. Anyway, just wanted to share this. I've held on to these for 30 to 40 years now. It's ancient technology. I have no intention of rehabilitating them as is because the new ways of doing things are so much better. So I just wanted to share this, that how you actually can make a robotic hand at very low cost, if you want to put a little bit of time into it, just get some wood and carve some pieces, some low-stretch string like Kevlar or some of these new polyethylenes, and uh, some wood, rubber bands, and you can make yourself a robotic hand. And, uh, and making these devices is not expensive. It's just time-consuming. So anyway, just wanted to share that, and uh, time to move on. You can see in, my, uh, in this video that the resolution of the old VHS uh, robotic uh, VHS tape that I did to digital format using an Elgato video capture device was not that great. Th this device is supposed to capture it in 480p, probably should have been good enough for an old VHS tape resolution, um, but uh, don't know, but this is easy to use. In my next video, I'm going to show you um, how, I, how I use this to do it. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, and, and uh, definitely uh, look for the next video uh, if you're interested in how to use this Elgato video capture device.